good Saturday morning, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Again, glad to come together with you today. Share from God's Word, uh, chapter by chapter. Today we go through Romans chapter 14. And this chapter is basically, much of it in the beginning, is speaking about the weak and the strong Christian and how we are to, uh, who are a little stronger in the faith, are to bear up with the weak. And before I speak of this, I want to make a cl something clear that there are times when we are to judge others. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, told us this in John chapter 7, verse 24, the judge with a righteous judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, the scriptures speak about how a sexually immoral brother was expelled from the church. Titus chapter 3, verses 9 to 11 speaks about how oftentimes a church or us as individuals need to separate ourselves from contentious people, people that are always critical, always causing problems, division. So I wanted to make that clear. But we also need to be reminded that there are weaker Christians, brothers in our midst, and how we treat them is of the utmost importance. I say this from my own personal experience. I was saved in 1985 when I was 19 years old, and about six years later, my younger brother John, who passed away all over 10, almost 11 years ago, uh, he got saved in 1991. And I remember when he first got saved, me and him would argue about teachings and doctrines in the Bible, premillennial, amillennial, Calvinism, Arminianism, and instead of loving one another. John Wesley was a was the founder of the Methodist Church. He was born in 1703. He died in 1791. He once said that when we are when we observed the uh, law, like "Thou shalt not commit adultery," "Thou shalt not murder," any law in the Bible, if we observe it, we're being obedient to the letter of the law. But when we love one another, we're being obedient to the spirit of the law. My friends, to love one another oftentimes is to look over an offense. If a younger brother does something wrong or says something wrong, we are not to keep a record of wrongs. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we know that as the love chapter. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Love, godly love, does not keep a record of wrongs. Oftentimes when I'm on public ministry here out on the internet, I have a lot of people at times that are very critical. If I say something wrong, they're quick to observe it. Uh, I've gotten threats, physical threats, and that just comes with uh, sharing the gospel. There are always, there's always going to be critics out there. And thank God my father raised me with thick skin where I don't really take offense to things. I, I even actually welcome when people have something critical to say, if it's of biblical uh, uh, value. But oftentimes, we argue and dispute, dispute about things that really are not that important. And in this chapter, in, first, in uh, Romans 14, it's speaking about how a weaker brother, a, young, a stronger brother could debate and fight over whether to eat this, whether to eat that, what day to worship the Lord. Uh, Colossians chapter 2 as I often quote, verses 15 to 17 speak about how we are not to judge one another on the day you worship. If you go to church on Saturday or if you go to church on Sunday, it doesn't matter as long as you're worshiping Christ and not the day. At least I hope you go to church, God willing. And secondly, here about what foods to eat. Now, we should give advice to people at times. If somebody's diabetic, you should stay away from sugar. Um, I'm very sensitive to caffeine. If I have anything with caffeine, I could have a, a bad reaction physically to my body, which can affect also my emotions. I could get chest palpitations, it's happened to me. So I have to avoid caffeine for my physical well-being. But if somebody else wants to drink coffee and it doesn't bother their body, that's their business. That's between them and the Lord. We're not to be judging others on these little issues. I see people often arguing and fighting over teachings that me and my brother argued about over 30 years ago, and it's sad. 
Because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ told us in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, that people will know you're my followers by your love for one another. And sometimes in life we love others, not so much by what we say, but by what we do. We need to learn at times, and I'm learning this as I get older as a Christian, to watch my lips. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19 says, In the multitude of words, sin is not lacking, but a wise person has control over their words, their lips, their mouth. James chapter 1, verses 19 and 20 tells us to be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. You often hear me remind us that God gave us, created us with two ears and one mouth for a reason, and I believe that's God's sovereign purpose, but to listen more and to speak less. Our words, when there's a lot of words, we get ourselves in trouble, can cause divisions even amongst people in the church. I've seen this through the years in my church, unfortunately. And many years ago, when I was a younger Christian, I was part of the problem in churches because I was very critical of what was going on. Uh, pastor wasn't dressed properly. Uh, the pews, uh, the, the, whether we should use old hymns or young, newer hymns. It's just legalistic it's it's just not not healthy when you have a critical spirit about everything if somebody's weak in the faith or somebody's doing something wrong gently humbly lovingly correct that person galatians chapter 6 verses 1 and 2 tells us carry the burdens of one another so as to fulfill the law of christ and if someone's in error gently hum humbly try to win that person back not trying to win an argument not trying to argue and fight and be critical about issues that we shouldn't be critical about the mark of a stronger christian is one who restrains his lips the mark of a christian is one who when offended or criticized doesn't have to shout back when i was younger i was in boxing and karate and if somebody hit you you had to hit them back that's what we were taught in the world but as christians we are not to be offended. Christ walked this earth. He was offended. He didn't open up his mouth. He was quiet. He was gentle. Before Pontius Pilate, he was like a lamb. He wasn't like a lion. He's going to come back the second time as a lion. He's coming back as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But Christ set us an example the first time he came to earth. And he didn't come here to fight and argue and win battles. When he was before Pilate and Herod and he was being treated maliciously and horribly he didn't open up his mouth he didn't open up his lips he trusted in his father he knew he who, who he was in himself truly confident people don't have to win an argument they know who they are they have a clear conscience before God and before man I hope today's devotional video my friends will help us if you know someone weaker in the faith come alongside them if you hear something, if you watch a preacher on TV or you go to church and your pastor may, maybe says something you don't like, try to refrain your lips. Unless something heretical is being said, like Jesus Christ is not the only way to salvation, uh, the Bible is not the inherent word of God, those are things we fight and stand for and have to defend. But there's so many things that we need to overlook. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today. May we walk in a humble spirit, Lord God, helping and guide the weak, remembering where we were in life, remembering the monuments of your grace in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you.